There is no position that we are in at this moment that represents anything close to strength, and certainly not with most, much of our Senate-confirmed positions being vacant and empty. Oh, you mean the Speaker of the House? And that, too. Yeah. In so, so 113.99, and then the vote changed a little bit, but it's still not the 218 yes. they need. You mean that part? Yes. Like they can't even put out a condemnation letter from the House because they don't have a House Speaker? Look, I, I, I don't care really what they do in that chamber in terms of their leadership. I hope they are better representing the people who voted for them by getting the Speaker that they want and all voices heard on the right and the far right, everybody coming together. Great. Just can you do it in 15 minutes? Like, why do we ha why does this have to look like what it did when you chose McCarthy? And they're going to keep that part under wraps. And I understand we won't see anybody until a full vote. But Kellyanne, <laughs> we need to get moving. The segment that you just watched from Fox News is emblematic of the growing frustration conservatives feel over the Republican speaker debacle in the House. And Fox News is starting to very gently tell Republicans, hey, maybe it's time to get your shit together. But unfortunately for them, they're not taking the hint. Take this interview with Republican Bob Good, for example, with Neil Cavuto. All right, you're worried, though, no offense to you, Congressman, you guys are looking kind of like Keystone Cops here. You can't get this done, and it, it doesn't... It, it, vote well for Americans and their opinion of you running the House because you can't seem to run it. Well, remember that was said back in January and a week or two True. later, nobody cared that it took a few extra days to elect a speaker. We got to get this right. We will live with the impact of this decision for decades. And with 33 trillion national debt, $2 trillion deficit, an open border, but what you said in January credit rating, blew up, right, Congressman? No fault to you. It, it, it blew did, up. So it did. When, would you and be I was for, not in favor. Would you be for that vote to, to vacate the chair when all it takes is one of you guys to torpedo a speaker. Well, only one one person can bring up the vote right. to consider whether or not to retain the speaker. One person can't remove the speaker, of course. But it um, works. But one right? person can. Well, one person can bring up the vote, and, and Speaker McCarthy doesn't uh, didn't Matt have the votes to say a speaker. Up and he got what he wanted. One guy. Yeah, seems kind of insane, does it not? Now, the reason why there's so much frustration is because they are still deadlocked and the infighting continues. Now, since the last time that I talked about this, 113 House Republicans voted for Steve Scalise, and this means he's the nominee. Now, they held this vote during a secret ballot, but the problem is that 99 other Republicans voted for Jim Jordan, and they don't seem interested in Steve Scalise at all, and they don't seem willing to back down from that position, which is a problem. Hey, sorry to interrupt here, but it's Mike from the future. Uh, just letting all of the viewers know that as soon as this video was finished being edited and exported and uh, being uploaded to YouTube, turns out we got some breaking news that I did not include in this video. Steve Scalise has ended his bid to be House Speaker. Now, what you're going to notice is that throughout this video, I talk about the attacks that he faced from Jim Jordan, from Donald Trump even. So you kind of understand that this was all kind of pointing in that direction. Having said that though, a lot of the stuff that I say is now irrelevant because I talk about it in the present tense as if he's still in the race when he is in fact no longer in the race. So keep that in mind as you watch the video. But regardless, enjoy. I'll give you additional updates next week if there's anything else. But, you know, it just kind of goes to show you that covering this shit show is very difficult. But I do think that a lot of the details in this video are still important because it gives you the most up-to-date accounting of what's happening. And, uh, spoiler alert, it's a fucking mess. But either way... Back to you, past Mike. Enjoy the video, friends. And on top of that, Trump endorsed Jim Jordan over Steve Scalise, and that kind of gives them a little bit more ammunition to keep going for Jim Jordan since Daddy Trump has crowned his favorite. Well, I like Steve. I like both of them very much. But the problem, you know, Steve is a man that is in serious trouble from the standpoint of his cancer. I mean, he's got to get better he, for himself. I'm not talking about even country now. I'm saying got to get better. And this is tremendous stress, all of the things that you hear about and, uh, you know, things that you don't want to get involved in from the standpoint of getting well. Steve is uh, going through very, very serious cancer therapy. And of course, then he had that horrible attack years ago that you know, it was amazing that he, he came back. I went to the hospital. I was with him the night it happened. I was literally with him holding his hand. And I was there the night that it happened, and the doctors gave him probably a 10% chance, and he made it. But 
there's tremendous after effect there, but he's got a very serious form of cancer. And, you know, most importantly, I want Steve to get well. I, I just don't know how you can do the job when you have such a serious problem. Is that the only That's reason you endorse Jim problem. Jordan? And is you that... know what it does? These treatments, they drain you of strength, supposedly. It's like a draining of strength. And we need tremendous strength, both inside and out, because we have radical left lunatics like Nancy Pelosi and Schiff and all these crazy people that are so bad for our country. And they've got to fight them off, and they've got to fight the outside world off. And right. So Steve Scalise can't be the fighter Republicans need right now because he is dealing with cancer. Now, this is the argument that Marjorie Greene is also making. She told reporters this on Capitol Hill, and she also wrote the same thing on Twitter, saying, I just voted for Jim Jordan for speaker on a private ballot in a conference, and I will be voting for Jim Jordan on the House floor. I like Steve Scalise, and I like him so much that I want to see him defeat cancer more than sacrifice his health in the most difficult position in Congress. I'm sure that's exactly why she supporting Jim Jordan over Steve Scalise. Now she goes on to say that Republicans need full leadership, which is why she's supporting Jim Jordan, so the party can focus on doing important things like protecting kids. Now, in a moment, I will explain why it is incredibly ironic to think that Jim Jordan, of all people, is going to protect kids, but we'll come back to that. So we are seeing some butt hurt from Republicans who support Jim Jordan and don't like that Steve Scalise is in the lead. For example, Lauren Bobo tweeted, we had a chance to unify the party behind closed doors, but the swamp and K Street lobbyists prevented that. The American people deserve a real change in leadership, not a continuation of the status quo. Now, these people are so self-absorbed because if she actually wanted to unify the party, well, more Republicans voted for Steve Scalise than Jim Jordan. So, isn't that more reason for you to switch sides and not them to switch sides? She can't see past her own biases. But what you're seeing here is signs of more rebellion from the fascist wing of the Republican Party. And while Jim Jordan is pretending to be a good sport, while he's talking to reporters at least, uh, he is covertly trying to destroy Steve Scalise's chances. Newsweek reports, allies of Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan are trying to sabotage House Majority Leader Steve Scalise's bid to become House Speaker by claiming the Louisiana representative has spent hundreds of thousands of dollars at a D.C. steak restaurant, according to reports. Eric Cordelessa, a politics reporter for Time, said supporters of Jordan have been sharing Federal Election Commission documents around Washington, D.C., showing that Scalise has spent more than $500,000 through his congressional campaign account at Capitol Grill since 2011. They are saying it reveals Scalise to be a creature of the Washington swamp and establishment, another sign that Republicans are not ready to corral around a single candidate. Some are preparing for a lengthy and bitter fight, Cordelessa posted on X, former Twitter. Now, I've got to say, it is very telling that Jim Jordan's allies are using steak dinners to attack Steve Scalise instead of, you know, any of these other things you can attack him for, primarily him calling himself David Duke without the baggage. That seems pretty incriminating if you ask me, but of course, such a statement doesn't even register as controversial to Republicans because they probably think that it's good and they like that about him. In fact, they find that an advantage, not a disadvantage, but they're going with steaks instead. Now, look, I get that $500,000 is a lot to spend on stakes, but not the biggest concern that I have personally when it comes to Steve Scalise. But Jim Jordan has to tread very carefully here because there's a lot more dirt on him than there is on Steve Scalise. And it seems as if Scalise has kept his powder dry so far. But if he really wanted to, I think that he could destroy Jim Jordan. But not everyone is remaining quiet. And Jim Jordan's past is now coming back to haunt him since he's in the spotlight again. News Week reports four former wrestlers from Ohio State University who accused Representative Jim Jordan of failing to act on allegations of sexual abuse when he was the team's assistant coach said the congressman shouldn't become the new House Speaker. Jordan has long denied accusations that he was aware of any abuse allegations aimed at OSU team doctor Richard Strauss while the Republican worked as a coach between 1986 and 1994. The allegations against Jordan first emerged in 2018, with six former wrestlers telling CNN in 2020 that Jordan knew of complaints from students about Strauss, but failed to take any action. Quote, he doesn't deserve to be House Speaker, said Danyasha Yetz, one of the former OSU wrestlers. He still has to answer for what happened to us. Mike Scheich, who is one of the hundreds of OSU students who say they were abused by Strauss, added, do you really want a guy in that job who chose not to stand up for his guys? Is that the kind of character?
character trait you want for a House speaker. Scheich dismissed Jordan's suggestions that he wasn't aware of any abuse allegations against Strauss. Quote, his locker was just a few spots away from mine, and mine was near Dr. Strauss, Scheich said. And we were always talking about Dr. Strauss. There's no way he didn't know what was going on. Rocky Ratliff, another one of Strauss's alleged victims, who is also a lawyer representing some of the plaintiffs suing OSU, said the accusations surrounding Strauss were an open secret at the university while Jordan was there. Yeah, this story is genuinely nauseating, and I absolutely believe the students. Jim Jordan feigning ignorance is something that he's doing, obviously, to make himself seem innocent. But his negligence here was so bad that I think it was arguably criminal. We're talking about somebody that didn't just sexually abuse a couple of kids, because that would be bad in and of itself, right? He abused 177 male students at least within a 10-year period. And you mean to tell me that Jim Jordan never got the sense that something was off? I just don't buy it. I don't even buy stupidity. As an excuse, I don't think that anyone can be that oblivious. Jim Jordan made the choice to remain silent because that was the most convenient option for him. Why rock the boat? Might as well allow the abuse to continue for years, even though it's an open secret that this is happening. So going back to Marjorie Greene's tweet about supporting Jim Jordan to protect kids, I find that so disgusting and comical because he had the chance to protect kids from a serial predator and he failed miserably. But Marjorie Taylor Greene thinks that, well, he's the one we can trust to protect kids. This party is such a joke. But whenever Republicans are hit with the truth and inconvenient facts, well, they do what Jim Jordan did. Plead ignorance. This is what Nancy Mace, a supporter of Jim Jordan's bid to be speaker, did when she was confronted about this on CBS News. I know you've been outspoken about um, defending victims of sexual assault due to the past allegations against Jim Jordan mm -hmm. that he turned a blind eye to sexual abuse. Give you any reservations? I yeah, I'm not a familiar or that? aware with that. I, he's not indicted on anything that I'm aware of. And so I don't I don't know anything and can't speak to that. But I will it's say that I have State been, University as you said, Margaret, a very yeah, I don't I don't know anything. And I, I don't know anything about that. What I do know is that I've been a very strong voice for women. I've talked to Jim Jordan and Steve Scalise about that. I've been a very strong advocate for rape victims. As you mentioned earlier, the Judiciary Committee, as with him as chairman, recently passed a rape kit bill that Barbara Lee and I are working on. And those are the facts and the data that I have to work with. And I've had a very positive experience with him in that regard yeah i'm not buying it it's despicable that this party who makes their entire identity or their main focus this year about protecting kids they just they prop up somebody who protected a predator it's genuinely morally egregious but it's right on brand for republicans now since we're on the subject of nancy mace i would be remiss to not mention her bizarre publicity stunt where she showed up to congress wearing a big red a on her shirt and she explained why she did this in an interview with reporters so let's watch that and then i have a lot to say when we come back i'm wearing the scarlet letter after the week that i just had last week being a woman up here and being demonized for my vote and for my voice i'm here to let the rest of the world know and the country know I'm on the side of the people. I'm not on the side of the establishment. And I'm going to do the right thing every single time, no matter the consequences, because I don't answer to anybody in D.C. I don't answer anyone in Washington. I only answer to the people. OK, the problem, Nancy, is that that's not what that means. As HuffPost explains, the 19th century novel tells the story of a woman who gets pregnant and is forced to wear a scarlet letter A as punishment for adultery. Now, people roasted her online for this, saying, show me you haven't read Scarlet Letter without telling me. And this person correctly points out that she will never be Emma Stone, which is accurate because in the movie Easy A, which is where that screenshot came from, that was a teenager who wore the Scarlet Letter in response to her being slut shamed, whereas Nancy Mace is a 45 year old woman who is not being accused of adultery or being punished for it, to my knowledge. She's just doing it because she wants to make herself seem like the victim because Republicans didn't like that she voted to oust McCarthy when she knew that that would be controversial. It's just so embarrassing. This is somebody who, out of all the Republicans, she was seemingly 
more sane. I mean, still insane to be clear, but more sane than the rest of them. But in the course of a year, she has completely demolished her reputation as a more reasonable Republican. And now she just seems as idiotic as the loudest Republicans in Congress. But back to the speaker race, because the pressure is increasing on Republicans to find someone, especially now since they want to vote to send military aid to Israel. But neither the nominee or the runner up are seemingly able to get enough support in the event this came to a vote on the House floor. And they know that. And that lack of a consensus has led to Kevin McCarthy flirting with the idea of once again throwing his hat back in the ring. For example, he tweeted out a five point plan to respond to the war in Gaza and has expressed interest in reentering the race if there's enough support for him. But the problem is that there isn't enough support for him. The Hill breaks down the current conundrum Republicans are dealing with. Quote, McCarthy's detractors appeared in no mood to allow for his return, and neither Jordan nor Scalise seemed to have a lock on the closed-door conference vote planned for Wednesday. And as we saw, yeah, they were pretty divided, leaving the House GOP without a clear path through the speaker conundrum. Quote, we're kind of like a scattergram. We're all over the map in terms of the way forward, said Steve Womack, a leading appropriator adding to reporters that talks were civil during a conference meeting Monday evening, but that there are still hard feelings after McCarthy's ouster. This is a hard conference to lead, Womack continued. That's a polite way of putting it. Uh, there's a lot of free agents in there. That's another <laughs> really polite way of putting it. A lot of people that just aren't going to forfeit their individual voting card. But I think right now, the need for the conference is to function more like a team. Good luck, bud. The world's watching what's happening, and we need to come together and unify behind a speaker, Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Michael McCall said Monday. But that pressure hasn't yet lead to a consensus. Yeah, and at the time that I record this video, at least, that still appears to be the case. It's almost as if this isn't a serious political party and they are incapable of governing because they're more concerned with theatrics and self-aggrandizement than actual governance. But keep in mind, as Jim Jordan attacks Steve Scalise, Steve Scalise is also getting attacked from a different angle because last week Axios reported that McCarthy's allies are also working covertly to undermine his bid to be speaker. So the person who is the nominee with the best chance is getting attacked from the other front runners. I don't know if you can call McCarthy a front runner, but he's at least a prominent Republican with a lot of sway still. And it just looks like a complete mess. And I just can't see that changing anytime soon. But I hope it gets messier because this is the most entertaining reality show I've seen in a while. And I will continue to watch so long as they continue to entertain and put on the show. Penis and balls, vagina. Peep, peep. Penis and balls, vagina. P word and balls, vagina. P word and balls, vagina. Ass, gum. Ass, gum. Ass, gum. Vagina. She stroked my face with the vagina. She stroked my penis and balls.